Hello and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to talk about my best photos of 2020 and I'm going to tell you a little bit how I made them and I'm also gonna tell you a little bit about what you can take away from them for your own photography. Without further ado, let's start out with the first three which I took on a bouldering trip to Portugal. Now for those unfamiliar with bouldering, bouldering is essentially climbing but instead of using a rope and climbing up a whole route of about 30 meters you tend to climb only rocks around 5 meters tall. Now one of the things that's really awesome about bouldering is that it is really photogenic. Anybody that sees a bouldering photo will instantly know what is going on because you see someone who tries to climb and tries to get on top of something. Now my bouldering photography is all about perspective. I try to find these, these perspectives that show you what is going on, that show you something extra. And I think that these three photos succeeded very well in this. This first photo, for example, um, you can see it's quite a tall boulder that my friend is trying to get on top of. At this height, you don't really want to fall because if you fall, that is probably going to hurt. You can strain or break something. Um, and I, I really wanted to emphasize the size of this boulder. I wanted to really show that it felt quite sketchy to climb this thing to be up there. And then I used a wide angle lens and I photographed perpendicular to the wall that he tried to climb. And I think that really worked because, you know, through using a wide angle lens, I can really emphasize the size of the boulder. Another boulder photo that I'm really proud of is this one. And it's also an interesting perspective and one that you can use very often in different types of photography. I think backlighting, if you have a good camera and a good lens, renders some absolutely gorgeous photos and this one is not an exception. So instead of just standing behind my buddy, uh, I decided to crawl down very low in this cave and the climber himself is really just pretty much a silhouette and that's what I think makes this photo so interesting. The final one of this bouldering trip is one of my favorites overall and I really wanted to take a photo like that for a long long time so I was super happy when it came together. And you can see there's a combination of lots of elements. There's waves crashing up and you can see all the droplets and they're frozen in time. And there's also this interesting lighthouse in the background. And I used a telephoto to compress the background to bring it closer and to make these waves look a little bit taller and a little bit closer to the camera and to the climber. And then you have the climber and he's kind of backlit from the sun that comes up from the upper right corner. Um, the sun, it, it was quite late in the day so we were entering golden hour as you can see. With bouldering photography I think you know what you can take away from this is, is go and look for interesting perspectives. Don't just keep the camera uh, at eye level and don't just shoot from where you stand. If you can very often backlighting is a good idea. Um, later on this video there will be some other photos that also work very well because of their backlighting. And that brings us to the next photo. As you can see here I turned backlighting up to 111. The story behind this photo was I was trying to take a wide angle photo of the interesting peaks who you can see on the left side of the photo. And I was with two girls and one of them had the same camera as I had. And she asked me to take a photo of her and her friends. And uh, I got them to stand up on that rock and suddenly I discovered how cool everything looked, how good the colors came out of the photo and I absolutely had to take one with my camera as well. I think it works so well because I backlit everything and then let the shadows be really dark. Uh, very often photographers tend to lift their shadows to preserve detail but sometimes it's just better to leave your shadows be dark and then you add a little bit more drama in the photo because the contrast is a little bit stronger. The next photo also from the same trip, is a little bit different in circumstances. Now instead of a beautiful sunset, I actually didn't get any sun at all that day. The story behind this photo is actually quite interesting. I woke up in a mountain hut. Uh, normally I'm really psyched to go for a sunrise photo shoot, um, but you know, I knew it was super clouded. The weather had been appalling the previous day as well. Um, so it, it took a lot of willpower to get up and try to shoot anyway and I'm glad I did because I got this photo with the mysterious clouds coming in and had I stayed in bed or had I gone straight to breakfast instead of just going out and see what it looked like I wouldn't have caught this photo because pretty much after I shot this one the clouds closed in and I was in fog for the rest of the day so I couldn't really see anything else for the rest of the day. So I'm really happy with this photo, I'm really happy how it turned out and this one is really a reminder to just go out even if the conditions are very very bad. 
I actually made two edits of this photo simply because I could. One of them is a little bit brighter and it has very very strong green colors which seem to light up by themselves. Um, I think it might be a little bit over edited but I went for this Peter Lick style just to see what I can do with it you know to give it my own twist. The other one is a lot darker, a lot less saturated, a lot gloomier and that might have fitted the situation a little bit better. It definitely feels a little bit more natural. And now time for something different. This year was also the first year I started to experiment a little bit with black and white photography. Now I'm not gonna turn into a black and white photographer simply because I also love color photography and I think that you know for commercial use color photography is more viable. However, black and white is really nice to work with and it teaches you different things from color photography. Now the reason I shot black and white is because in the color version you'll see that the whole image doesn't look as interesting. That's because they were both taken in pretty harsh lighting condition. Now this photo with the moon above the Gros Venediger was taken at 7.30 in the morning on the 5th of September. So the sun was actually up for a little bit then. It was still the golden hour, but unfortunately it was on the wrong side of the mountain. So you know, the sun was shining straight on this mountain and it was exactly perpendicular to where I stood so my perspective on the mountain despite the fact that it's a beautiful mountain top with a moon above it which I think is absolutely amazing uh, the light itself was not that interesting when you use color this is why I switched to black and white and what you can do when you shoot black and white you can use a red filter and a red filter actually filters out all the blue colors and it makes them very dark so what you have is this blue sky suddenly turns into this really really dark dark dramatic dark sky and that is what I used and that's uh, how I got the moon to pop as well because if the sky looks quite bright it looks quite pale and you have the moon it, there's no interesting contrast to draw the eye towards the moon now this other photo was taken uh, in the middle of the day and there was a lot of texture to this glacier and I just love that but again the light was really quite flat uh, that was because it was later in the day it was nearly 12 o'clock in, in the afternoon so you know that's when the sun is quite high and that's when you uh, don't have any interesting colors uh, because the light is so flat especially when you're up at higher altitude so again I went to black and white I again used a red filter to get this darker sky um, but also what black and white does you know these harsh contrasts that look so ugly when you have color photography suddenly become super interesting in black and white and by enhancing the contrast I was able to bring out the texture of the glacier and that is what this photo is all about. So this photo to me is the ultimate adventure photo. Now what's interesting to know is that this photo along with the next one and the previous two were shot within 24 hours of each other and they were all shot in the same area in Austria. I was on a hike uh, called the Venediger Hoenweg which is a, a hike which is kind of a sort of semi-circular loop around uh, Gros Venediger which is a huge snowy mountain in Austria and it is a beautiful beautiful hike with these insane glaciers in the background and this particular area had the most insane glacier running down the mountainside and you can see it in the background and you can see the insane texture and crevasses it has um, that just I can take photos of that any day every day really I had never seen anything like it uh, as you can see I actually use the telephoto lens to bring the background a little bit closer and that is something I've done on a lot of shots last year and as you can see this photo is also very subtly backlit you know the Sun is kind of setting and it comes in from the upper right side of the frame and it backlits my buddy and it makes him stand out to the bluish uh, backside of the mountain you know if he wasn't backlit he wouldn't have stand out and the photo would have appeared a little bit flatter than it is right now so this is just something that I really try to incorporate in my photography is just use the light and use some backlight or rim light because that very often makes things look a lot more interesting than just shooting with the light. Now this photo is the one I am most proud of. Uh, I got super lucky with this but it was also quite a lot of uh, hard work. I think it took around two and a half hours to get this uh, shot before I was happy and I'm really happy that I put in the, the hours despite the fact that I barely slept at night uh, because I was uh, up quite late and I was uh, up quite early the next morning and you know when you take photos like these you don't go to sleep very easily. I was hoping for a Milky Way shot 
I didn't know where the Milky Way was going to show up or if it was going to show up. And people were saying, you sh you don't get your hopes up. It's not going to happen because there's a very strong moon tonight. And they were right. The moon came up, but it came up in the other side of the sky. So you had the Milky Way on one side and a moon on the other side. And what the moon did, because it was so far away from the Milky Way, you could still see the Milky Way, but it lit up the mountains. It lit up the glaciers. So I could get... Uh, perfect exposure for the Milky Way and for the mountains in the foreground in just one shot. First I started with wide angle photography, you know, wide angle photos, but it just didn't work out because the glacier didn't look super interesting and uh, the mountains look kind of small and insignificant. And then I used uh, standard focal length, 35mm, uh, which is kind of 50mm equivalent when you use a full frame sensor. And I just shot it and it worked and it worked uh, quite well and I was able to kind of narrow my composition down between these two mountains and on the right side you have the Klein Venetica and on the left side it's the Schwarzwand uh, and in between you have this this insane glacier the Schlatten case it's called and it just streams down and you can see how large and how impressive that glacier is I also had to wait because first Milky Way was way off to the left and it took you know a long time before it was finally right in between these mountains so it's perfectly framed uh, and i actually printed this one very large uh, 90 by 60 centimeters and it's hanging in my home right now um, so i'm really happy with this shot and it's going to be hard to top this one for sure for next year all right that's it for now those were my best photos of 2020 i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you get to take away something for your own photography if you like this video, consider liking and subscribing. Uh, it really helps my channel grow and it's just nice to see some positive feedback on the work that I put out. Um, there'll be new videos whenever I feel like it, which is usually once or twice a year. And in the meantime, I hope you have a great time. And remember, just go out and shoot.